Good morning, everybody. Today is, oh, hello, everybody. It's playing it otherwise. Today is Sunday the 11th. It is 11 o'clock and I just got up. I slept very late. I'm having YouTube on with a debate, which I should not do. And I'm going to my sister's and then we go to the other sister's to um, look at her flat a bit and tidy up. And um, yeah, I am very sorry for the last video. There was a soundtrack on it. I did not, normally I, I load it up onto YouTube and then I watch it there again because it's different than watch it on my iPad or something. I see other things, but mostly I don't want to correct it then because I just um, got it out of the hand cell phone, which takes about 15 minutes to download it there and upload it. It's always a half an hour or more. So I didn't want to do that again. And I didn't see it yesterday. I thought, okay, now I look at my video too. And there's a soundtrack from the beginning to the end. And mm, this is a pickle. <laughs> and now somebody wrote and I need to get ready. Okay, I need to get ready right now. <laughs> and go there. And uh, yeah, I slept at around five and just got up half an hour ago and had two honey broads. Honigbrote, uh, bread with honey, slices of bread. Like uh, Switzerland, we eat a lot of bread. And yeah, I'm proof of that. So, I should be ready. It is now an hour later. I am back home, it's half past 12. And I want my coffee, first one of today. And uh, we did take a little care of, my, my, of, of, of the flat. Um, I did the dishes and Tanya did clean the bathroom stuff a bit. Also, we got rid of the garbage so it doesn't stink because Martina is not there now because she agreed to go somewhere to get professional help because we cannot help her and it's too much for the whole family. We're all broken. And so on Friday night, in a, <laughs> we call it Nacht und Nebel Aktion, in a night and mist action. We drove her there. We went that and Tanya and I was the navigation <laughs> with my cell phone. Dad was the driver and Tanya and Martina were in the back and we were there at 10 at night. And then we took off there again at half past 11 and we're home at 10 to one. And I am, I'm terrified of, of, um, of car rides because I've had things to and I have developed a fear of, of driving in cars because everything where I don't have the control I have a problem with. But I can't drive at the moment either. So <laughs> it'd be good if I could do that again because I, yeah, horrible. Also cannot go into lifts anymore. Um, elevators, scared of it. <laughs> so, and that's the short version of Martina. I'm just very, very angry at her, very, very angry. <laughs> And then her dishes and her kitchen actually look better than mine does. Her flat's alright, it's dirty, but it's alright. And it's not the first time that I do something for somebody else and cannot do the same stuff for me. <laughs> yeah. And then I get angry. But Tanya was glad I came. She said she was glad I did the dishes. She wouldn't have gotten to do that. And I thought I was not that efficient. And <laughs> she thought she wasn't that efficient. But we were there for an hour. And yeah. Now also my mom can be relieved because the garbage is out because she's thinking about what needs to be done and that is very sad. And it's funny is that mom and I, um, I am a lot like my dad, um, kind of have many male tra traits or whatever that's called. On the other hand, I'm, I'm very much like my mom. <laughs> and my mom and I, we are more angry and uh, yeah, yeah. And dad and Tanya are more sentimental about it. and. Um, empathic yeah so that's it's kind of interesting because it's interesting for me did i put that cup down do you know <laughs> okay so i make coffee and then i hope i can do the same with my kitchen later on <laughs> so, because i need to do it too it, it is um it has been standing and stuff there's still the jam stuff from tuesday i think Tuesday or Monday, because the, the emergency thing with Martina happened from the night Tuesday to Wednesday. Yeah, so. <laughs> 
I don't know how it goes on. I hope my I, I hope she gets better. She gets back to being herself because I, I don't like her the way she is now and for a long time already. I can't. I am very very. I'm very very sensitive. I'm very. I, I get a lot from what others are feeling or or what they're going through. Not exactly what they're going through, but if they're well or not. <laughs> and she's not well. <laughs> But ignores it or, or then dials it down says it's okay mm. and that makes me very angry and also she said something like only with medication she could go back to the family and i said no i mean when we can talk to you normally then then you know then it's not the medication but sure the medication kind of makes her more normal and also for herself she can't stand life anymore right now the way it is so with medication that was not the case now i'm talking about it anyway <laughs> and it, she says life is unbearable but the medication would only be for the family so we would accept her as a normal person but the, the case is that she wants to take her life at the moment and that is because she has not is not taking medication so uh, but she's now in a, in a good place it is better when she's around people and we i, I can't offer that my mom, they were here yesterday again, and she nearly cried. And my mom never cries. I've seen my dad cry a lot because of those things with us kids. We all had it. Um, it's it's horrible, horrible. And uh, mom's exhausted. And and that never happens. Also, she's always exhausted, but that she cries, and she nearly did that here. So I don't know where I started now. So. And I'm just angry. Because again, she doesn't want to take the medication. And um, this is why this happened. Because she got rid of it. And she doesn't get it. And it happens all the time like that. She gets rid of it. This happens. And then she does it again later on. And it costs money. So that's another part. We are all exhausted. Our energy is gone. Our nerves. Our lives have to stand still for that time we'd need to take care of her which we do but um uh, i had to cancel my appointment last week with a with a ct and now i have that next week also you i'm glad i can do appointments again now that she's somewhere uh, otherwise we have to be ready all the time and, and that doesn't work and yeah it costs money we now take care of the dog put her somewhere and um, her insurance doesn't cover it all so dad has paid that um, but it costs more and now we still have to do something over the doctor so that they ask the canton if they give some money for that or yeah and um, it's always the same and it's annoying and I really don't get it when somebody who says yeah, I'm not worth any anything and I'm punishing myself I don't get it I, I don't get it I don't get how one thinks like that and on the other hand, everybody needs to help her somehow. She, I, I don't think it's conscious of her, but she wants people to spend to spend time with her then all the time. And um, I don't know, I don't know. <clears throat> and always the family she doesn't listen to. It's like in the Bible, like the prophet is nothing in, in his own family or something. I can tell her, call them. She doesn't do it. Somebody else does it. She does it right away. So I don't know if that's how it went, but it might be. She told me on Friday evening there's a, an emergency phone, and I had been on the phone with those people all morning, but there was not the emergency routine there. And I told her call them because I did already so many times, and nothing came out. And then I heard nothing for ten, fifteen minutes, and then she said there will be a spot for her. If things got cleared up and then I called them again and then I had four people on the call. I was on the phone with the, with the arts, with a doctor, with my dad to see if he can drive, with Tanya to see if she can go pack with Martina and my, Martina too to tell her she, she can go right away. So <laughs> that's how we went there on Friday night. And then in the car she said that she called somebody again who then said she should call and then she looked at me and said, yeah, and then, then she called. So I told her she didn't do it. They did. And then she did it. And it's always like that. And I am very pissed off about that. Yeah, she's just not listening. <laughs> it was the same with mom too or others from the family. You've got to be better. 
I said something a hundred times and somebody else says it once and they listen and oh that pisses me off so happy Sunday and the thing is that I'm very open about those things I have I have depression and then that, that affects me a few more times or not and I'm not ashamed of it or, or think I'm weak because of that. It's just how it is. And many people have, uh, they feel shame or guilt or whatever. And they want to hide that. And I find that very annoying. It's now trending that everybody is kind of showing their vulnerability. It's, it's that part. And then it gets a bit annoying too. You don't have to mention it all the time, but just don't hide it and things. And I could say it's so much better in my thoughts. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't come across. I try. I try it again. <laughs> um, and now it's gone again. Also, as when when I was in in the school for for psychometricity therapy, I at one point I wrote the whole class that I have depressions, and I'm not well. I have it seasonal. It's really in September, October, August, September, October. It, it has changed since then, but it was very typical for a long time. September was a bad month and February was a bad month. November was my best month in the whole year. So it had nothing to do with sunlight. It's a seasonal depression, but it has nothing to do with sunlight. It's more like the air pressure or something that changes. Or when the big weather changes happen, then I was exhausted and very, very um, depressed. Um, and I had to go to school and that school was very, with a lot of exercise where you have to play theater or be very extrovert in that time and I had problems with that. I talked to the teachers and I took myself out of games and stuffs. And one time I think I overheard that somebody said they thought that was mean that I didn't have to participate. And after that, I wrote the whole class uh, an email because everybody got an email from school and told them my case. And that's why I'm not participating in th certain things. And because I can't and I talked to the teachers and stuffs and so on and just wanted everybody to know it so that nobody could talk bad stuff about me and accept that I um, I have some troubles. And then that led to <clears throat> some, some of my friends there. One had also, well, she didn't do that though, but another one was borderline and then she took that and also got open and told, um, told the class that stuff. So it helped others to come forth to and, and talk about those things because one notices it anyway. One knows there's something weird about it or something. And instead of hiding it and pretending everything's fine, uh, one can just talk about it. And then all the others, if they are talking crap about it, then they're very mean people. Otherwise, yeah, one wonders, one, one gossips maybe, one talks about it, but when you're open about it, it kind of takes the wind out of their sails. And also it's better, it was better for me, so. Uh, I don't have a problem with that. And I do that for many years already. That is, it was in 2007. Yeah, 2000, 2007. And um, yeah. And many, many struggle with that. And especially also my sisters, or Martina especially, because of the, they feel they're not uh, normal. They're not um, worthy. They're, they, they're ashamed of it. And, and also some adamants about it. They don't want to have it. They want to be normal. And at the same time, they say normal is everything. We should just accept everything. But on the other hand, they compare themselves to normal all the time. Therefore, they feel so crappy. So it's a discrepance, discrepancy. And, um, and also, I said something before. Also, if somebody lies to themselves about things and then they say that stuff to you, it doesn't mean they're lying to you because... They're kind of not aware of, of it. And, and then that's where it gets very confusing because I, I don't know. I don't know how far they know it, what they're actually saying. And there's other things that you can notice that you, you see that they might not mean that or they might think something completely different about it and which will occur to them later or something. It's just very annoying. So that is that topic. If, if everybody just accepted that they're not perfect and that they're not... <laughs> God or whatever, so but just human. And everybody's got issues, more or less, and we don't have to pretend we're all perfect. Also, we don't have to very much stress the other way either. Just be normal, and uh, if you have a struggle, just be open about it, um, and don't blame others when you have a problem. <laughs> 
because that's what's happening now among other things everybody needs to pay attention to not hurt any feelings yeah uh, that's that's too far into that direction then but yeah ah it's annoying <laughs> and just one last thing because i have noticed the things going down with martina already in october i was already alarmed back then and uh, my family wasn't um then they was more like this year they noticed it too and uh, it's exactly what happened <laughs> ever since uh yeah i said it in october now we have june from the next year and people just don't don't perceive it as much or i i do i do see a lot i observe a lot and i and i can't stand inauthenticity <laughs> it's, it's very annoying and also martina she just didn't have contact with me anymore because i think she thought i would say something and um but i've learned through the last she had it that before that I shouldn't say anything or she goes away or gets angry at me anyway. So I, I didn't say anything. And now I said it when she came uh, on Tuesday night. She said she wants to end her life. And then I said, please take your medication. Uh, she came here a week before that, actually, that she thought about it. That she needs help and thought about medication and so on. Um, yeah. So... And um, yeah, she was gone from, from the family for a long time. And then it gets worse and then she comes back and we're jumping and everything. And um, it does make me not like her friends too, because um, well, that's what my older sister said. Yeah, they, uh, great. They say, yeah, no medication. Medication is bad, but then it gets very bad. And where are they then? I mean, then that's the family that jumps because we feel that responsibility. It goes in there. So we cannot relax until it's, it's solved. And friends and stuff, they, they can shut that out a bit. They're not 24-7 just on high alert through that. And, uh, yeah. I did kind of write her that too. that um, Because I felt like she thinks that we just want her gone out of here. We do. Because we can't relax. But it's also that she gets better. Uh, because we cannot do it. We have It's too much for us. Um, but I don't know how, how she thinks about it, how evil we are or something that we just want to get rid of her. And then I told her that the family is different than friends, that we are included if she's here or not. If she's some, is at her house or in our place at the moment, we are stressed, anxious about it and we cannot help that. And others, um, friends and stuff, they, they, they have more distance. They are kind of out of it and um, it, it doesn't go that near to them. <laughs> yeah, I think then she took, she, she got out of mom and dad's house and um, got back in contact with another friend. And, and dad had the idea that there's something we could do here um, and she could stay home. But that she only said that when we were already there in the other clinic. And uh, that makes me angry again. So now they come with their solutions. Um, if she can, if she, if she wants to go out of there, she can. She's there by free will. She can get out by free will. Then she has to take care of herself. Then she has to look for it with friends and stuff. And I don't want my family to run for her anymore, because it's annoying if she doesn't. Yeah, that's all we can do. We cannot do more than that. She needs to do that herself, and she wants to do that herself anyway. Or then the friends really have to take over and take her in and do everything for her and pay the bills and take care of everything, which they don't. <laughs> they're not responsible for that so and that is it and now you nearly know everything about it i cannot shut up about it because it it very much goes into my life um i mean i went there now by free will to help out with the dishes and stuff but i sweated a lot and now i might get sick and tomorrow i have a dentist's appointment which i gladly would cancel because i'm very scared of it but i should go through with it it's the dental hygiene thingy which I wanted to do for about six years now, and um, I should really do that. And I need to take pay attention to me because I, I sweated and then I got very cold and I'm back on the couch. And yeah, yeah, no, I kind of said it all. Yeah, just everybody be open and honest about your struggles. Don't hide them. One notices it anyway, but most of <laughs> most people don't. <laughs> oh, well, that's another topic. When you talk to somebody and they don't hear you, they just hear their own stuff and what you're saying. That's so annoying too. Yeah, I am very, very empathic. I am a good listener 
and a good observer <laughs> and i've seen that very, that's very rare and um i love it i love to have a um, um somebody vis-a-vis -vis, a partner to talk to and then not a partner to talk to just somebody to talk to and that person at some point says thank you you completely understood me i love that part that makes me feel very good and um it, that's very rare and i love it when it happens to me it's very rare too um it's mostly i remember one time that was with thomas he was an ex alcoholic or something it's just people who have struggled they might understand maybe better others are mostly or, or older people they start or we start talking and then I hear the stuff like, ah, you're still young and stuff and so on. And then I tell them a bit about myself and then I let them talk. And then I am, um, I'm a good listener. And by the end they say, oh, they would like to talk to me again. And um, I do appreciate that a lot because then they see, yes, I am young, but I have some experience and um, mostly when they are um, in sufferings or something, there was an older lady her husband had cancer or something or it wasn't good and and I was listening and she really appreciated that and it started with yeah you're still young what do you understand and by the end she wanted to have me for another talk <laughs> so um and one can learn it if one really wants to I I've seen a study because I got so annoyed about it too that in empathy or men like not listening or something um if there's money involved they did the test um with empathy or listening or something and no money involved nobody really listened if there's money involved and they really wanted to they could do they could do it uh, so you can learn empathy if you, if you really want to you can <laughs> maybe not to the extent like like a hundred percent but one can get better and that would be great that's what's missing in this world yeah so thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one